So a lot of you guys follow this channel because you want to know how to get into PA school. James got into PA school not once, but twice. I literally failed like my first six exams, bro. I'm being completely honest with you. Like, I just didn't know what to expect. It felt like after I failed the first one, I just couldn't recover. I got down on myself, trying to work a little harder. Um, I didn't know how to study. You know, studying in undergrad compared to PA school is totally different. And, you know, mentally, you know, people don't talk about the mental aspect of PA school. I said, you know what? I'm going to do this because this is what I want to do. But I got to find a way to get back in. And this time, I want to make it count. Yes. So the whole thing was designed basically as a pre-medical thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's yeah. where you ended up excelling. Absolutely. Absolutely. You hit around yeah. the nose, bro. And he literally said, well, you know, I hope this good news um, serves you well. We just wanted to offer you a seat in the Rutgers Woo! program uh, for starting. Yes. And it was just shocking, bro. Helping others is a calling. It's not a job. All right. Hey, guys. My name is Boris. I'm a physician assistant in my third year of practice. Joining me today is a very special guest. So a lot of you guys follow this channel because you want to know how to get into PA school. James got into PA school not once, but twice. So that's going to be an interesting story. I can't wait to hear some of the comments you guys have. But if you have any questions for him, let me know. But without further ado, James, the floor is yours, my man. I want you to tell us your story. Who are you? Uh, first of all, Boris, I appreciate you having me on, my man. I appreciate you allowing me to tell my story. So cheers to you and all you do to help all the pre-PAs out there. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. Um, in terms of my story, yes, it's been a journey, man. Um, probably around 2015 was when I decided I wanted to go to PA school. Um, a girl I was dating at the time, she actually told me about the PA profession, you know. I had this mindset it was either medical school or nothing. I think a lot of people have had that mindset. I really didn't know yep. what people did. And she was just telling me, you know, just look into it for me. You know, I was, I said, okay, fine. Looked into it, loved it, right? Loved everything about it, the flexibility. Um, started researching schools and just made up my mind. Um, I had a lot of fun in undergrad. I went to East Carolina University, located in Greenville, North Carolina. And so it was probably like a good seven or eight years before I decided I want to go to PA school. But I had like a lot of, a variety of grades, I like to say. Some C's, some D's, some F's on the transcript. And so researching schools and, and the reality, um, it just hit me like you're going to have to retake a lot of these classes if you're serious about this. And so that's what I did. I was working as a CNA for home health. Um, so my schedule was kind of a little all over the place, but it allowed me a lot of flexibility when I decided to go to school. And then that's when I started taking classes um, at my local community college. Um, at times I was going to a community college and a university. It was about 30 minutes away because as you guys know, with upper science level courses, community colleges just don't offer them. So I'd find another way. So I was taking all those classes, um, retaking gen chem, bio, um, biology, um, orgo, genetics, biochem, um, like a million courses it seemed like. But um, after a lot of hard work and whatnot, or in 2016, um, I was fortunate enough to get accepted into Methodist University. I think I applied to like 15 schools, and that was the only school. Wow. That it's not only offered me an interview, but they accepted me. And that was in March of 2016. And so it was a great feeling, man. Um, you know, I remember going there, how nervous I was. They said there was basically four slots left. I think one of the uh, potential applicants asked them how many slots were, which slots were left, which I thought was a little forward but you know whatever and so mm -hmm. um there was like 15 of us and i was fortunate to get one of those slots so i'm excited my hard work's paid off um and now i'm going to be a pa i went to methodist university there's a small school it's located in fayetteville north carolina big army town and so didn't know much about it knew a little bit moved down there was decided to go to pa school and i knew it would be a lot of hard work but i was ready to get my journey started and you know a lot of people tell you PA school is like, you know, drinking from a water hose or it's unlike anything you've ever experienced. But the problem with that is you don't really know until you get in there. That's one thing that I really learned. But, you know, it's funny, man, because once you're in it, like it's too late. Like you can't like pause or backtrack like you're in it. So you just got to go through it. And, uh, and you already got student loans. And I already got student loans, bro. And so you're problem. in it. You are yeah, in it yeah. to finish. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No and it was back. a private school, bro. And it was a private school. So, you know, it was even more expensive. Yeah, like um, 60K a year. Yes, sir. And so it was tough, man. Like, my first, I literally felt like my first six exams, bro. I'm being completely honest with you. Like, I just didn't know what to expect. 
it felt like after I failed the first one, I just couldn't recover. I got down on myself. And like, you know, in PA school, there's no time to get down on yourself because something goes bad. And before I could blink, like six exams had passed. The first exam I passed was like my anatomy exam. And I was like elated. I think I got like an 83. I was like so happy. Like, I'm like, okay, something good came out of this. But, bro, probably I probably failed 15 exam, exams that semester. Wow. No, no lie. I was barely getting by. And, you know, there's certain schools have a remediation process, and every school is different. How Methodist did it is if you, like, took an exam and failed, you had, like, an assignment you had to do. Then you had to retake the same exam and pass it. And if you pass it, you got a 75, which at that time was, like, the lowest for a C within their curriculum. And so I was doing that. You know, you can multiply that by 15 or whatnot. So I'm working three times as hard as, as like, most of my classmates, and I'm barely getting by uh, Methodist had a policy where if you fail two class, you could fail two classes in didactic, and then after that, you would, you know, have to leave the program or have to remediate or decelerate or whatnot. And so I failed two the first semester. So I used my two up out the gate. It was physiology, and it was pharmacology. There was three farm, three parts of the pharmacology class. So it was farm one, farm two, farm three. So I failed farm one and physiology. Remediate the remediate those. I had to study all Christmas break which was terrible because I really didn't even get a break, came back, didn't even know if I'd be able to start the semester because I had to pass these exams, but I was fortunate, fortunate enough to pass. So I'm coming to the spring, new mindset, trying to work a little harder. Um, I didn't know how to study. You know, studying in undergrad compared to PA school is totally different. I'm looking at the slides. I'm getting stuff mixed up. I can't keep stuff straight. I'm staying up till 3 in the morning. I can't stay awake in class. It's just like a revolving cycle, bro. And so I was fortunate enough to make it through the spring, barely. I think we had 10 classes at that point. The fall semester, we had like seven. And then we went through the summer, and I'm pretty sure we had 13 classes. And it was just a lot, bro. It was like nonstop. There were some days we'd have two exams in one day. I was just like overwhelmed. And, you know, mentally, you know, people don't talk about the mental aspect of PA school. You know, you're working as hard as you can. At least that's how I was raised. And you're expecting to see the fruits of your labor. And that's not happening. And so. I go into depression. I'm very bummed out. I start getting resentful because, I mean, I don't know what else I can do. I'm doing all I can, and I'm just not seeing the results. And so... Um, Did your program support you at all? You know, on they, this they, downward spiral, counseling, uh, yeah. tutoring, did anything? They, you know, they say, you know, you can come to our office hours if you want, James, which I did. There was yeah. a lot of support there. But, sure. man, you know, like... I don't know. Maybe I don't think I was ready for PA school. And to be honest with you, Boris, when you keep hearing the same thing over and over again, you start getting tone deaf. Like, yeah. I didn't want, I didn't want to hear, like, you know, the same old keep working hard and stuff. I need to know how to pass these exams. If I pass they didn't, them, like, I'm break good. down, like, step by step how to study? I mean, they offer, like, study groups and maybe you can study with people in the class and, sure. and stuff like that. But I'm not a big group studier or whatnot. Yeah, not um, me neither. And so that that didn't work. What I did find out that something that did work for me was like charts and making them colorful. I'm a visual learner. Yep. So mm -hmm. like if I'm learning stuff in charts, if I got a diagnosis, I got the signs and symptoms, diagnostic and treatment. If they're all in red, when I'm studying, mm -hmm. I can remember that. So when it comes up on the exam, okay, this diagnosis was in red. What was the treatment in red? And it mm -hmm. worked. It clicked. Um, but I was like writing out my charts. That was the problem. That was taking too long. And so then I had to go on the computer. I didn't find the computer to be as effective. And so I was just like all over the place, man. Um, and so the summer we entered, uh, we had like a weekend in between semesters. It was a 27 month program. And so it was super intense. Uh, the summer was like 13 classes. And that fall and fall was the last semester before white coat ceremony. So I'm like, okay. I'm not too far ahead. Just keep going. Just keep working. You know, I'm barely getting by, but I'm getting by. And so, man, it just got to the point, like, it was so intense. Like, you know, when we had um, our finals that semester, you know, it was like 13 finals, like, in a week. And it was just, like, insane. Some days it was, like, two finals in a day. And I'll never forget it was my ortho final. And I just didn't feel good about it, bro. Um, I did what I could. Uh, but, unfortunately, I didn't make it. You know, I just didn't make it. And so then pass, you know, they said I could appeal, but that like very rarely gets accepted. I don't think anybody ever got accepted for that. So just depressed, man. I'm not going to lie. I'll just be honest with you. Just went home, cried. I was just so down. 
I didn't know what I was going to do. I had to call my parents. They were like, it's going to be okay. We're going to figure this out. Just a nightmare, man. I had to break my lease to my apartment. I had to like, you know, I gave all my furniture to like Goodwill, like the um the refurnish store, refurbished store or whatnot. I had to do all that. Move home. In debt. No direction, right? And so I just can I just call attention to that because that's something like I don't want this to be a a Debbie Downer episode, but this is a cold hard reality that nobody considers. So, yep. like, I'm sure, just like me, I'm sure you were in, like, the pre-PA groups, right? Right. PPA yep. support group, 2024, whatever. Right. right. And, like, people get their acceptance letter, and they're like, I'm going to be a PA. And you're like, probably, but, buddy, like, it, this is not a guarantee. This is the first step. There's, like, a thousand steps. Yes. And nobody thinks that this is a possibility no. that you could be out. And right. you could be out with more debt and more, you know, just, like, drama and all kinds of stuff yes. than before you started, unless you really put in the necessary work or mm. some people put in the necessary work and they still don't make it, you know, like yeah. it's a reality. Right. It's a reality. Most people make it, but not right. everybody. Right. And so, one... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that, that's mainly it. Well, and yeah. I, I guess I was just also going to say some people make it through and they don't pass the pants. Right. That's also a possibility. And it's never even who you think it is. Right. Like some of the best students don't pass the pants. And it's like, that's also a possibility, guys. Like, nothing's guaranteed. Right. You, okay. That's one, one thing I learned. You got to put in that work regardless. Until you get the mm-hmm. passing on that pants, you can't breathe. You know, you got to stay focused. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, until you get the C. That, that, until that, you get your right, C. Right, right. That's what I'm aiming for, what you have and whatnot. Well, and, and so, then the real work begins. That, and then the, the liability work. begins. Then it's yes, a whole sir. different piece. <laughs> you know, well, that, yeah, that's man. a different thing. Yeah, man, it was tough though. Um, like I said, people don't talk about they don't see that moving home, no source of money. Um, I was able to get my loan back my loan money back before that next semester started, but I kind of wanted just to have a refund check because I had like no money at the bank, you know. So I had to move home. Yeah. It took me like a month to move, move my apartment because I was going down like once every few weeks to move stuff back. And I finally just rented a uh U-Haul van and went down, moved all my stuff. Packed up, told me I told myself I wasn't coming to Fayetteville again. And so going home, I'm down. My mom had told all everybody in the neighborhood, everybody at my church, you know, these white coat ceremonies happening. And then this happens, bro. And, you know, I just I didn't go outside for I don't know how long. I was way too embarrassed. I didn't want to talk about it. I don't want to address it. I was just so embarrassed, bro. Hurt, you know, and my dad's military. He knew how hard I'd work, and so he kind of gave me a few days to myself. And then he was just, you know, he's a pretty straight shooter. He's like, "All right, what you going to do?" Like, it didn't work out. Do you want to try again? Do you want to do something else? You know, me and your mom will support you. You know, we love you regardless. If you want to go to nursing school, fine. If you want to go to X-ray tech school, fine. So we got your back. And do something. Um, right, you know, gotta do something. Stuff. Right. Yeah. And my mom was like, you know. And even a lot of my professors, they say, you know, you work really hard. You got a big heart. You know, if you were to go to be a nurse or an x-ray tech or whatever, you'd be a great job. You do a great job. And I thought about that, man. And I said, I didn't go to PA school to be an x-ray tech or nurse. Like, I want to be a PA. And it took a while. You know, I I just, you know, just thinking about it and seeing all my classmates go to White Coast, seeing them pass the pants and seeing all my former classmates who are now PAs, like it bothered me, man. Like it really, really dug at me. And I just remember thinking, I can't go out like this. Like, this is what I want to do. Let me make the necessary adjustments. Um, I had people I thought that was in my corner that left, they counted me out. You know, you really find out who's in your corner when you're down. It's not when you're oh, up, yeah. when you're down. You really, really find out. And so, you know, I stayed focused. I never forgot that. I kept receipts. I said, you know what? I'm going to do this because this is what I want to do. I got to find a way to get back in. And this time, I want to make it count. And so I took some time off. You know, I was just working. We're, we're back to a CNA. Um, luckily, my old job had some some work. So I was fortunate to get some money coming in. But it wasn't much. Man. You know, CNAs don't make that much money. And so I was just, like, barely getting by. Um, and that was, like, 16, August, 6, August of 2016. And probably March of 2017, things got a little better. Just a little bit. Um, and then I decided, you know, I want to go back to PA school. I originally said I wanted to go to nursing school at South University, 
But I was just saying that, you know, I didn't really have that in my heart. I just wanted to feel some type of meaning, I guess, or, or self worth. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I was going to pass forward. Right, just to pass forward. And then, yeah. um, you know, I took a nutrition class there and then they were talking about the tease test and stuff. And I was like, no, I'm, I don't want to do all that. So oh, you would have aced the tease. It was so easy. Yeah, that's why I hear, man. But you would have like, killed it. Right. I was just like, eh, <laughs> let me try this P PA school thing. So. When I yep. finally decided to make the decision to to reapply and to look into PA schools again, I'm researching and now I have this big issue is I was in school and I didn't make it. So now that's an even bigger issue. Now you're not even trying, you're not only trying to get back in again, but you have to explain to these schools and make them feel comfortable why they should accept you if you didn't make it through the first time. Right. Like, what's well, different this time? Right. What's different? What is different this time? Right. And so I'm, I'm researching and stuff and trying to find the answer. You know, I'm getting frustrated and I've come across like, you know, some advice on some websites and stuff and people are getting master's degrees. And they're like, you know, a master's degree basically is like a litmus test. It gives PA schools a better idea of, you know, can you handle the rigorous coursework? You know, it's not like PA school, but I mean, master's degree courses are harder than undergrad. That's why there are master's degrees. So I'm just like, OK. And I think I was going to go to the University of Vermont or somewhere up north, somewhere random. You know, I was just trying to find somewhere. And I was just typing. I typed in anatomy and physiology in the state of North Carolina because I'm originally from North Carolina. And uh, up, comes, up comes North Carolina State Interdis Interdisciplinary Masters of Physiology program. And I just clicked on it. And literally the first thing I read, bro, was um, this program is designed to make applicants more competitive for health professional programs. I'm oh, sorry. that's like a sign from God right there. Whoa. You ever heard like they, uh, he like brings things around until you finally master it. Like yes. he'll bring the same kind of like toxic relationship back around until you get yeah. over it. He'll bring right. like, the same, whatever, same situation. So yeah. you, basically you failed physiology or you didn't do good in physiology and you were like, huh, maybe I should get a master's in physiology. Yes. Like yes, nothing sir. shows that I've conquered that hurdle than, than that. You know what I mean? Right. right. Absolutely. And it just, like you say, it was like a light bulb. I'm like, this is it. So I started looking at the program, pretty flexible, three classes we had to take, physiology one, two, and biochem. Um, the rest we could choose. Really, really flexible. NC State was an hour and a half away from me. Fayetteville was three hours. So I'd be closer to home. I'm like, okay, let's do this. Had to apply. Um, had to show I had taken like some recent coursework. So I submitted courses from my community college. I was fortunate to get an interview with them on March, in March of 2019. And was able, you know, I went down there and man, like Dr. Uh, Dr. Wozniak, he was, uh, he was interesting. He came in there um you know, kind of like nerdy looking type, but very smart, very serious. And so I had to submit all my transcripts, including like Methodist. So he's going through and stuff. And he's just like, so you're in PA school. I'm like, you know, yes, sir. And he was just like, well, you know, it's harder to get in twice, right? I'm like, I know what, you know, I feel like this is going to help me. He said, well, you know, we're not an easy program, right? Like, just because you didn't get it, make it through there, that doesn't mean it's easier. I said, I totally totally understand i'm just looking for an opportunity that's all and he said he's like well you know i'll be honest with you i don't i don't know i don't know you at all he said but you know a lot of people seem to think you can do this and on a side note my program director she wrote me a letter of recommendation to apply to that program the master's of physiology Your program program director from pa school yes methodist oh shoot really yeah we stay in contact till today man we stay in cover number wow. in my phone and so she um, she really believed in me. And she basically was like, this is what happened. She acknowledged my flaws, but she was just like, just give him an opportunity. And I think mm -hmm. he'll shine. And so he gave me an opportunity. He accepted me. I started August of 19. And so moved to NC State. Mixed feelings, right? Excited. But now I've taken this extra step, you know. But mm -hmm. I knew this extra step was what I needed to get where I wanted to go, you know. So it was one of those right. types of feelings. Um Going there, staying focused, you know, worked hard. I was in like a graduate suite on campus. I'm like 10 years older than everybody. It's kind of like reality <laughs> sitting, man. Like, it's fun, like, isn't it? Yeah, it's fun. It's great. It's a little fun. Yeah. Like, like you've a, seen those like GI Bill memes, like the Adam right, Sandler right. one where he goes back to school. That's what it feels <laughs> <Yeah>. like. <laughs> so uh, I got 3.3 that semester, but it was hard because, you know, my parents were helping me. They supported me. My mom always wanted me to do something I love because she didn't, you know, she wasn't able to do that. So, 
she was always wanting me to do a career that I love. So they were helping me. Uh, I'll be honest, they were like taking out their retirement funds. So I, I felt a little depression here. Like, wow, they're wow. having to help me out their money. I know they care about me, but like, I'm an adult. Like, I should be able to do this on my own. And so I was depressed. I was like, man, I need to help them out. And so the next semester, I said, I'm going to apply to be an RA next year. I want to be old, don't care, whatever, you know, I'm just going to do it. Went through that whole process. And uh, long story short, man, they offered me a resident director position because they saw I was in math, a graduate school. And nice. so I didn't know what that meant because I never, I was never an RA in undergrad. And it turns out with the resident director, it was like a free furnished one bedroom apartment, free meal plan, free health insurance. They were paying me oh, like wow. twice a month. Plus, they were paying my tuition, period, bro. So essentially, I was getting all, free all of oh, it. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So, like, I got a free master's degree, basically. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of like God saying, you focus on studying, and then you can do well. You don't have to worry about money or anything, and I'll take right. care of this. And so that He's was got right. all these kids for drinking. Yeah, man. Yeah. And like I said, that was your job. Right. <laughs> party pooper. Professional party pooper, James. Yeah, I had a good that was job. Right. <laughs> I, was I remember like some conversations man. with the resident directors. Oh, sure. College. Yeah, man. Like I was like the old man on the block. Friday nights, yep. I just wanted to drink, drink my green tea and watch Blue Bloods on CBS. You know. <laughs> oh wait a minute! You didn't wear like a like a tucked in collared shirt, did you? No, mine was not tucked. It was tucked. That it was untucked. Okay, at least because like that guy is such a pain in the butt. Bro. Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't that guy. I was actually pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool. Good. You were you were oh, good, yeah. RD. You weren't like yeah. a tool. Right, 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 right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I just remember this one cool yelling at me. <laughs> oh, how much did you have to drink? You know you're right. 19. Like, uh, yeah. zero. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, yeah, everybody man. knows anybody knows the RD. Right. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. Next um fall spring semester, I got a 4.0. First time I got a 4.0 on any collegiate level. That fall yeah. fall, I got a 3.93. Holding nice. it down. And then my last semester before I graduated, I got a 3.6 and finished with a 3.824. So with a bunch really, of physiology and all yes. kinds of tough courses. Right. There it is. That's what you needed. That's what and you needed. Just to touch on the, the physiology course, Dr. Boraquez, she's the professor there. She's really tough. Long story short, her her husband works at Duke's medical school, Duke University Medical School in Durham. And so when she took over the program, there were complaints from the medical school that do that students were coming in and not prepared for physiology like they should be. And so she says, well, what would you do different? And they were giving her ideas and those ideas she used to like transform the course. And so it was really hard, bro. Like we had to like, this is the way she used to do her exams. Like, you know, she'd have a slide when she's lecturing or whatnot and she's just talking. Anything she says is fair game, anything. And so when it came to the exams, how she does it is like the average, the base average is a B. And then one standard deviation above that was like one one grade level above. So like an A. Oh, she graded on a curve. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, Ooh. I hate that. That's not fair. Yeah, it was it was tough though. Like, so we'd have an average yeah. of 65, 72, but if you got a 72 yep. or 65, you got a B. So right. I had never experienced that in my life. It was stressful, mm-hmm. but it got me through, man. She really prepared me because like I, like you said, I was so weak in it when I went to Fayetteville and physiology. My week became my strength. The stuff started to make yes. sense, you know, a mm-hmm. whole lot more sense. Renal health specifically, I uh, I struggled so badly with, man. I didn't understand, like, reabsorption and secretion and the pumps and the directions they're going. You know, if you don't understand that, it's over. You have to understand that first. And so I had a hard time, you know, metabolic acidosis, all that stuff. I had a really hard time. When I went to state, it made sense. I was able to grind it down and understand it. And, like, even in PA school here where I Rutgers, you know, when I was taking physiology, it was just kind of like review. Just review. Yeah. So, and so speaking of review, just just real quick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, that, was a, that was a monumental part of the story that mm-hmm. I hope people can kind of, like, pay attention to. It was, like, you had this weakness in physiology, and that's kind of what started your whole downward spiral the first time you were in PA school, mm-hmm. right? Right. So then somehow you found this master's of physiology that it's not like a research master's. It was more like a basically like a post back trying to get people into medical schools. Correct. You know, because this this professor that taught physiology there, like her husband taught at Duke Medical School. And he basically said, prepare my students better for physiology through your program. Yes. 
Yes. So the whole thing was designed basically as a pre-medical thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's yeah. where you ended up excelling. Absolutely. Absolutely. You hit yeah. around the nose, bro. And like I said, there was there people in my class going, trying to go to PT school, PA school, med mm -hmm. school, vet school. Uh, yeah, it was a big pre-med thing. Right. It was a big pre-med thing. And it was a that's cool. uh, pretty solidly known program from what I was told, at least. Um, yep. It got me where I wanted to go, so I have no complaints. But I'd say, um, you know, I remember graduating. You know, we graduated. It was during COVID. That's the other thing. I didn't. I forgot to mention. I was in class during COVID, so everything was online yep. and all that and whatnot. And um, just adjusted to that. But I graduated in May of 2021. You know, we graduated at the stadium outside. You know, social distancing and all that. And my parents came, so they were super excited. So I was happy, man. It was nice to have a form of accomplishment after what I had been through. You know. And mm -hmm. I've now had what I needed to take the step forward to get into PA school. I had the golden ticket, which mm -hmm. was that master's degree. I actually yeah. had the diploma. And in so, physiology. yes, in physiology. So now it's time yeah, to apply. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so now it's time to apply again, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And like you said, with schools, it's interesting. So this time when I was applying, it was kind of like that 3.0 minimum was just like, I wasn't really looking for that. I was looking for more schools that were accepting you know, master's degrees and or looking at your most recent 40 to 60 credit hours. And that's the way I advise people to do. Like if your GPA was like mine, like on the rocks, look at people to look at your most recent credit hours, like mm -hmm. apply strategically, apply smartly. Don't apply just to like 100 programs. How did you find programs that did that? Just research, bro, being a bulldog. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of friends like on Instagram that might. You know, they may went to a PA program. They say, oh, this, look at their website. And I would always look at the website, you know, just to confirm. But just being a yeah. bulldog, man, um, looking on, um, you know, websites. I think Reddit, I found a bunch of schools that did that and confirmed. And it was, like, really nice. Like, somebody posted a picture of it. And I just went to each school oh. to see if they followed through with it. So I had, like, a nice list of schools, man. Um, and it was just really nice. Um, Rutgers came into the picture because... Rutgers did not have any like, you know, thing where they would look at your most recent credit hours, but they had this thing called a letter of explanation, meaning um, you need at least a 3.2 undergrad. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a 3.2, write, write this letter of explanation basically saying why you don't have a 3.2, what happened mm -hmm. and what, what you did to like bring your grades up and why we should accept you. And so like mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, my friend, I literally wrote maybe like a page and a half, two page. Um, single space letter explaining everything I had been through, literally. Yep. Started from the beginning, told them, then, you know, leave out any flaws because, you know, PA schools are going to see all your grades and stuff. So trying to hide something um, isn't going to work. And so I was just honest with them. I said, this is me. This is what I've been through. This is why you should give me an opportunity. And um, applied. Rutgers was like near the top of my list, so I made sure to get my stuff in early. That's another thing I, you know, I emphasize to people. If there's a school you really want to get into, apply early, get your stuff early into them. Plus, they didn't require the GRE, which was nice. That's nice. It's really nice. And so I applied, um, heard that, made it through like the first wave of screening of applications, and then I got invited for interviews in I believe early September of 2021. Super excited. Um, it was through Zoom because I think they were still doing COVID, you know, guidelines or whatnot, which was nice. And so, you know, preparing myself, you know, I did the interview from home, had a suit and tie, you know, tried to dress the part and whatnot um, and practiced. And, you know, I was interviewed by two. One is, was actually my advisor. She's one of she's my advisor now and another faculty member and a third year PA student. And they interviewed me and. Out the gate, bro, you know, it, of course it comes up. What happened at Methodist? And I just told him, man, I was, I was, listen, I wasn't ready for PA school. I messed up. I made a mistake. I went to get a master's in physiology um, to prove, and I literally said this, that I'm not a joke or I'm not damaged goods. I want to be taken seriously. I said, I didn't make it through it the first time, and that's on me, but I'm ready now. I just need another opportunity. And I hope my master's degree helps display that. And, um, it's crazy, man. It went well. I thought it went well, but you never know. Um, they they told us, like, you know, we usually accept people right out the gate. You know, you're on the wait list or we just have to flat out deny you. And I think four people at that time at that time had been accepted. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I applied to like 12 more schools, so I'll at least get on the wait list. And literally, bro, like probably a week later, I got home from work. My phone rang. It was like a 732 area code. I recognized it from New Jersey. I picked up the phone. Mm -hmm. 
it was Professor Matthew McQuillan. He's one of our professors here at the program. Asked how I was doing. I said, you know, I'm doing well. I hope everything's okay. And he literally said, well, you know, I hope this good news um, serves you well. We just wanted to offer you a seat in the Rutgers program uh, for starting yes. 2025. And it was just shocking, bro. And he said, something wrong? I'm like, well, you know, I told him, I said, you know, you have a thousand applicants. It's a top tier mm-hmm. program. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy I got in. I said, I'm just kind of wondering how. He said, well, you know, we read your story. He said, you really put in the work because there's not a lot of people that would have bounced back like you did. He said, at least what right. I think. He said, you put in the work. You deserve it. He said, and um, you're just a testament of what happens when you keep doing the right things. And so mm-hmm. that was nice, bro. Um, it was a lot of hard work. You know, my parents were super excited. Um, I was just elated, man. I, did, I never thought it would be possible again, man. You know, but I just kept working hard and, and had the faith. You know, I couldn't see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just kept believing and started school at Rutgers, um, August, 2022 did well the first year. Um, it's a three-year program for people that don't know. So after the first year, we first years get their summer off, which is nice. Came back last August, went through the whole second year, had our pendant ceremony, which is like white coat ceremony last mm-hmm. month, February 23rd. And I'm currently two and a half weeks from finishing my first family, first rotation of family med. And oh, here so I you am. made it all the way through didactic. Now you're, you're oh, all the way. oh yeah, bro. All the way. Yeah, and like you said, it's funny. Like a lot, somebody told me this quote. I never forgot it. What you learn in the valley, those tools will take you to the mountaintop. Mm-hmm. To the top, you know, you got to go to the valley and learn some lessons because the mountaintop cannot teach you lessons. The valley can, but what you mm-hmm. learn when you go to the valley, those tools and those lessons, they help you reach the mountaintop. And that's what happened, man. I learned how to study. Like even though methods didn't work out, I took from that you know, tools, what did work? What was effective? How did you study? And so Mm -hmm. instead of trying to figure out how to study like I was at Memphis at Rutgers, I could just hit the ground running out the gate. Yeah. You knew what you were doing. You were confident. Right, right, right. This wasn't like my first rodeo. And I made sure of that. And it it was a much smoother transition, bro. Much smoother. Yeah. You probably felt like one of those students that like knew how to study from like age six. And they've right. just been doing the same thing over and over again, and they've just always yeah. been perfect. You're like, all right, but now I'm at your level. Now I know what I'm yeah. doing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I felt like the playing field was, was even now. So it's nice, yeah. man. But yeah, made, made, made all the way through didactic, bro. And, you know, as you know, that's like the rigorous part. And mm-hmm. um, now I'm in the rotations part. It's, it's kind of funny. I describe the rotations. It's like when you're playing a video game and you can't get past a certain level. You keep losing and dying and losing. But then you finally get past it, but there's a level above. And so you're playing the game. You've never been on this level, so you just kind of got to figure things out as you go, you know. And that's kind of what rotations are. It's way different than second year. I like it. Don't get me wrong. It's just different. It's it's like that your entire career, essentially, but, like, especially those first few years. And second year, of, or I guess clinical year of PA school is basically like your first year of practice, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you're starting to like get hands on. You're trying to figure things out because nothing in real life is like the book. I believe. Oh, yeah. Totally. 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 Once in a while. And then sometimes you run into it and you're like, oh, I remember that on a slide like three years ago. Right. 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 Gratifying. (laughs) And then you tell the soup doc and they're like, wait, how do you know that? You're like, I don't know. I just I remember it. Right. But most of the time it's just like it's just such a different beast in practice. So you're right. It's like you're at the very beginning of the video game. Yeah. That's where all your progress is made is at the beginning. And then you're just kind of probably after a few years of practice, you're kind of coasting. Oh, yeah. uh, unless you switch specialties, then you're back at the beginning again. Yeah, man. My first it's week fun. of my rotation was like my head was spinning, like mm-hmm. spinning, you know, um, a trip yep. between trying to learn how to like put orders in. And I got to write my note. And then the medicine in general, like, mm-hmm. you know, family meds, everything, as I'm sure you know. So it's not like you're just a gas. That's my first job. Yeah, you got to know everything. Um, and so I've everything. seen a little bit of everything. And it's just like, oh, I got to recall this, like, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it's tough, man. That first week, I was just like, <sighs> I just had to take a deep breath, man. Because, like, it, like yeah. you say, it was totally different. It's totally different. It's a different beast. It is. And you touched on, like, not even knowing the medicine and not even, like, being good with patients. But, like, the actual rubber meeting the road, how do I put this thing into the computer? Mm-hmm. What dose do I use? And then how do I put in that dose? Oh, and by the way, now their insurance isn't covering it. So now I need a second, third, fourth, and fifth choice. And then I also have to figure out which one of them can afford things, which one can't. 
If they yeah. can't, how do I use a coupon card? There's so much stuff. Yeah, bro. But like once you know it and you realize that how the system works, then you're more right. You know, then it's forever. Correct. But it takes a long time. It's more it stuff to Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Man. Epic, the program we use to like you know put medications and stuff, our electronic program, that alone mm -hmm. was a learning curve in itself. On top of I that, heard on top I heard of Epic that, has their own trainers because it's so complicated. It, is, which, it yeah. is, bro. It's bad. And like we had so like this is the only thing I didn't like. We had like two weeks of clinical skills and we had epic training, which was online, but the only way to learn Epic, man, is to really get on there and do it yourself. To use Epic. Right. Training is not going to do anything. So when I went in for my first day of rotation, it was kind of like, I've never used Epic in my life. And so <laughs> it was it was steep, bro. Like, you know, how not to create too, too many notes or double note. Like you said, ordering dosages, putting in orders, referrals, mm -hmm. all that stuff. It, Bro, that first week, I, I'm telling you, I was just like, man, I don't know. This is tough. Yeah. But like I said, with time, it gets better with time. That's the it only gets better solution. with time. Only solution. Nah, you're not supposed to be comfortable in school ever. Right. Like if you're comfortable, right. you're doing something wrong. That means something right. bad's coming. Don't you can't right. be comfortable. Right. Uh, your first job is going to be like that for like a year or two, right. and then you know if you stay in the same field, then it just becomes just chill. Right. You know, but cool. you, you got to put in that work. Right. Absolutely. That's the. Uh, I think that goes in anything, bro. Whether it's free PAs, your MPA school, or your PAC, mm -hmm. you always have to put in that work if you want to see results. That's that's the constant. Yeah. But it's worth it. It's yeah. so worth oh, yeah. it. I'm Especially sure. like if I don't know if you're someone that practices gratitude, but like if you actually take a moment and like see how far you've come and something that would have been really, really hard and intimidating becomes less hard and intimidating, it's so gratifying. Like uh so for instance, like my first job. I remember my soup doc, my supervising physician who owned the practice, Dr. Ojabelli, mm. uh, he would just like prattle off to a scribe. Oh, yeah, we'll do this, this many milligrams for this many days. And I was just thinking like, man, this is like something I would look up, like something I would Google or up to date. Like, how do you just prattle this stuff off? Right. And then like a year later, you're finding yourself doing the exact same thing to a pharmacist without even looking at the patient or the note. You just know it. And you're mm. like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought only yeah. Dr. Ojabelli knew how to do that. Yeah. And then it's just like. You're just like, man, I, I, I got it. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Now what else do I need to learn before something else happens? Right. But it's like <laughs> it's so gratifying, but it just it happens with time. There's no there's no shortcuts. Right. Right. You know, it's hard, bro. Yes, sir. But it's cool. But yes, what sir. I really wanted to come back to a yeah. little more like nuts and bolts specifically is okay. uh so like you said, the first program you were in, like mm -hmm. yeah, they they were supportive and they obviously the director still keeps in contact with you, wrote you a recommendation letter, totally supports you, but there is no actual like tactile nuts and bolts. How do I study skills being taught? How did you learn that? How did you go from like this ain't working, I'm failing 15 exams to I got a 3.9, I got this? Like what what nuts and bolts, like actual skills did you learn to study? Uh, a lot of it just went through PA schools, kind of like trial and error. I hate using that, but that's yeah, bad. But it's the, true. the bad part is I had to sacrifice through P PA school, right, to learn that. And so mm -hmm. um, I first you have to identify what type of learner you are. If you're auditory, that works. Um, I have some people in my class now, they're auditory learners, which I'm super jealous because I feel like that's the easier <laughs> way to learn. If you can just listen, my attention span doesn't last that long. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm a visual learner. And so colors and visual images and videos like if i see something i'm a big movie watcher so if i see something you know how you can re recite a line from a movie or whatnot or um, yeah, a picture of yourself. yeah i'm a visual learner and so that's that's what stuck out to me and that's how i study use a lot of charts and colors even through my didactic year and especially my second year of pa school because i was the medicine portion of of pa school um a lot of colors like so you know like i said condition and i was like make it all red or blue and then i started making the words a different color so like blue box with yellow lettering you know make it vibrant and make it like bright colors or abstract colors so it's something that's going to stick out that you won't forget you know it's just going to be something you remember that's how i studied in farm um pharmacology is i'm sure you know drug drug class moa side effects contraindications black box mm -hmm. warning all that stuff and the only way i was able to study was to make my own charts i would and i would just make columns for the um, the words I just said, and like just make them different colors. It's the only way that got me through, man. Because there's so many drugs in farm. You know this. Um, so, so how how did that work exactly? So let's say you have like a class of drugs. Let's say I don't know, like 
MS drugs or something. I still remember my acronym. But let's just say you have five MS drugs. You made them all different colors or you make them all green or something. And then when you get to the test, you just remember the green or how does that work? So I right, let's say let's say fluoroquinolones, for example. I was studying that earlier. So fluoroquinolones, um, we can use those for different infections, I think UTIs or whatnot. And so Ciprofloxacin, Ofloxacin. Ciprofloxacin, right. Um Arius, yep. ADEs, uh, you know, this is really abstract, but tendon rupture, you know this, of course, obviously. And so, like I said, I'll have a column. I'll say, okay, let's do drug class. And so I'll have drug class and I'll write fluoroquinolones. And I'll organize it on the computer where it's like writes down, where it's like bigger. And so I'll do that. And then I'll put drugs. So everything, all the fluoroquinolone drugs and just list them. And then next I'll do like indications, where are they used for? You know, if there's something specific, I'll bold it or put this specific drug. Um, but if they're all the same, I'll be like, okay, it's used for so and so, so and so, so and so. And then next, I'll go to um, like contraindications or side effects, and then I'll put all the side effects in one and contraindications and black box warning. And then I'll have a miscellaneous section, anything that doesn't fit in the rest that they may mm -hmm. want us to. Know. And I'll just make a call. Um, I will make the font small because we have an iPad. You know, we use iPad in our program, so I could always yeah. sort of, you know whatnot. And then I will make. Um, the next wave of drugs under it, and then I do another set of drugs, and I may make it blue, blue and white. So the first one, like my fluoroquinolones, uh, would be like yellow and black, yellow background with black words, and then the second one would be like blue background with white words. And so mm -hmm. I would just study it, bro, and circle, make notes, and study it repeatedly until it grained in my brain. And it was just and it was just like the colors and the sizes that would just like help you. Because like different groups, you would make different colors. Yes. And then maybe different um different categories, you make different sizes. Yes, that's the that's yeah. that's the staple. And if it's something okay. important, like I'd make it bold and I may make the font like 32. Like you need right. to know this. This is important. So that's or, the first thing you see when you're studying, like several right. times. Right. So you just know or, it's big. Yeah. Right. Or if they emphasize, they said, or they'll say this is going to be on the exam. You need to know this drug or know what this does. The font's huge, you know. It's just like Yanko mice and red man syndrome. Right, right, right. Like know this. <laughs> know this. Um, yeah, yeah, everybody knows that one. Right. The other thing yep. I'll say is I used a lot of um alternative resources as well, like a little bit of osmosis. Sketchy Med mm -hmm. was outstanding for microbiology. I don't know if people have used it. I'm sure people have heard of it. It was outstanding. Farm and microbiology. Mm -hmm. It was top notch. Literally, all our class used it for microbiology. Amazing. Amazing. Very visual. Yes. Yes. And again, I'm a visual learner. So, of course, it catered mm -hmm. to me. Love it. Um, they mm -hmm. have Osmosis Med. They have Sketchy Med. They have Pickmonet. I had a friend. She, she used Pickmonet. Um, Pickmonet was yeah. okay. Um, if you want short and quick, that's more of the way to go. But if you want thorough and detailed, mm -hmm. um, Sketchy would be preferenced. But I didn't use those the first time, bro. It was just like slides or whatnot. And so, right. like, wash and all that stuff. I didn't use any alternatives. I was just trying to go by the slides. Mm -hmm. And I think that hurt me as well, trying to which isn't enough out of the box, right? Not using enough. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's uh it's interesting what like alternative resources people are drawn to based on their learning style. So you like sketchy and stuff. I don't know if you know who AK Lectures is. Yeah, I've used his yes, yes. For him, I used all the time, but he's more about lists. Right. And I think I might be like a reading learner, like where you like it's all about language, less about you know, just like mm -hmm. colors and sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really gravitated towards him because he mm -hmm. would just make it like as concise as possible, mm -hmm. but it was all like in a sentence form. He didn't really draw much. And that's where I learned all my stuff is from that guy. Right. You know, so it's like everyone uses different resources. Just try yeah. a few of them out, see what works for you. Absolutely. It's funny you said AK Lecture. I totally forgot about him. That guy's awesome. He went to yeah. UR. Yes, brilliant. sir. When I was in my master's program at NC State, my master's of physiology mm -hmm. program, I used a lot of his um, videos yeah. for biochem yep. and physiology because you said he made it he got to the nitty-gritty he made it short and concise and i would literally mm -hmm. copy everything he wrote on the board like yeah. on a piece of paper literally i had the time i would literally copy it and it just mm -hmm. made things like life a lot easier bro he's great he's fantastic yeah yeah i'll, I'll never forget like the kidney i think the nephron is one of the most complicated like physiology things we learned mm -hmm. and i just remember it was like a really like nice like fall warm day and I was just like, I don't get this. And it was a lunch right. break. So I took a walk around campus and I just yeah. like listened to AK lectures yeah. and I got it. I listened yeah. to the same like eight minute video, probably like, I don't know, eight times uh -huh. for that whole hour. And then yeah. by the time that hour was done, I was like, I got this. Yeah. 
Right. You know, he's just amazing. on repeat. He's amazing. On loop. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think Ninja Nerds and another one. His videos are a little long, though, but I heard they're really good. Mm-hmm. I heard they're very There's good. There's so many resources. There's so many, man. Okay. It's endless. So different. So you're really playing on your uh, your study style, uh, visual stuff. You're organizing everything kind of the same way. So it's uniform, but then you got things like broken up by colors. Yes, sir. And you just did the same thing with everything and yes, it sir. just stuck. Yes, sir. That's cool. So that's, uh, would you do that with for every class or that was just pharmacology and then for like physiology, you do just something different? Um, for farm, I made my own charts. Um, mm-hmm. And then for everything else, it, was, it wasn't organized quite the same way. It was more like everything mm-hmm. was in a box together. Like, so the, the condition, the signs and symptoms, the diagnostic and the treatment was all in one box. But I still made changed the colors and made it vibrant and whatnot. It wasn't more so columns. It was just more so like mm-hmm. every every symptom was in its own box. But I mean, I was still able to like keep everything straight and whatnot. But the color changing did not change. I made sure I made all my study guys in color. That's the first thing mm-hmm. I did before I even started. That's so interesting. That's something I've never tried or thought of. But I've seen people do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's man. Cool. The only way I could keep the information straight, you know, when I was at when I was in Fayetteville, like I study a slide, it's all black and white. And so mm-hmm. I get this mixed up with that and that mixed up with this. So I had to figure out a way not only to study, but study effectively where I can keep everything straight and I can retain it. Mm-hmm. That was my biggest thing. Dang. Man, there's so many different ways to do this. Mm-hmm. I never would have thought of that one. Never would have thought of just making things different colors. Right. But it made all the difference in the world for you. Yes, sir. Yes, you know? sir. There you are, done with didactic. So, I mean, testament, it works, right? Right, right. Not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So that's definitely something I wanted to come back to. Is like specifically, what did you do study wise? Yeah. So that definitely uh, worked. What else yeah. we got? We got your whole story down. I'm just trying to look through our list of stuff. Uh, if this was alive, obviously we would be looking at comments, but we're not. Right, right, uh, right. This is one that I kind of wanted to come back to. So you said you initially wanted to be a doctor. You wanted to go to medical school. Yeah. And then as always happens, it always happens with a girl. Some girls like, hey, you should try PA. And you're like, sure, I'll do anything you say. And so naturally you went with PA. So like, what was that? Was it just a girl or was it something actually specific about the career? Um, More so career. Like she, like the girl so. I was dating at the time, she was just kind of like, we you know, do it for me. We just do it for me. And I'm right. trying to be a good boyfriend. Okay, fine. But literally <laughs> when I did research it over, I really did like what I see. Cause I'm like, wow, you can switch specialties. Like, just because, you know, in medical school, mm-hmm. you know, you go through residency and then you're kind of in whatever you went to residency for. There's no switching. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so I can go to family med. And if I get bored, I can go to ortho. And if I get bored of that, I can go yeah. to neuro. Like, really? Just like that? And yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I'm looking at the lifestyle and all that. And I was just like, wow, this is nice. And then school's not that long. I was just like, mm-hmm. hey, I've been missing out. I said, but this is what I want to do, though. This is what I want to do. I knew it would be hard. Um, I had talked to PAs before I went to school, and they all said the same thing. Girls would say, I'd rather deliver 100 babies than go to PA school. <laughs> Guys said, you know, Probably. like, yeah, it's like the thing, you know, it's it's the hardest thing. You never want to do it again. You're happy you did it, but you won't ever want to do it again. There's no way in the world. And so um, I knew it would be challenging, man. But like I said, I, I, I've always loved medicine, and I just thought it was the perfect fit. You know, by that time I was like 28, and so med school would be like I'd be like 36, 37. I'm like I kind of, which ironically mm-hmm. I'm 36 right now, but you get what I'm saying. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> it just worked out that way. right? It worked out. I was just like, you know, um, I just like the field, man. I just like everything they had to offer. I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. Like in another life, you could have been like in residency right now, or maybe yes. you're done. Uh, yes. But at the same time. Would you have gotten there? Would you have made it through? Would you have been this and that? Like, you don't know. Like, right. you don't know. You don't know. You don't and know. you definitely wouldn't be as confident in your abilities and like all the experiences you have. You wouldn't have two masters. It's just, yeah. like, happened differently. Is it? You're right for everybody. Everybody's timeline is different. That's another thing I learned. So. Absolutely. Man, that's, that's one heck of a story. I appreciate it, bro. That is seriously one heck of a story. It's been Eddie, a long... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, it's been a long road, bro. Um, learned a lot. Learned a lot about myself, you know, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it, you know. I think everything happens for a reason. You don't understand back then why, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I still understand, but I just know I'm here. 
And uh, like I said, I graduate next May, so coming in hot. <laughs> yep. The world better be ready. Yeah. James is coming in with so. a lot of experience and a lot yes, of confidence. Sir. Yes, sir. Ah, that's awesome. Uh, so you're 36 in PA. Yes. Yes. Where almost everybody, if we look at the numbers, is below 25, 26 or so. And just about everybody's a uh, blonde-haired, blue-eyed female, uh, 78% or so. How is that? You know, how is it being a little different from almost everybody in your class, age-wise, demographic-wise, everything-wise? I think we got a few brunettes in there. <laughs> yeah, just like two or three. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah, um, already made an exception. Right, right, right. Um, PA school's a lot in- different now, you know. Different mindset I came in with. It was all mm-hmm. business. You know, I wasn't here to play any games or whatnot. Um, my first time around, I was like around the average, you know, I was 26 when I started, 26, 26, That's about 26. Right. About right. So it was a little different. We had a few older people. I remember thinking, man, they're old. And then that's <laughs> old, you know, I'm just like on the back end. I think I'm like fourth oldest in the class. It's no. interesting, man. You got people from all over the place in our class. Like somebody, we got a guy from Oregon. We got a few from California and all that, but. I will say, like, me being 36, like, I just don't have a lot in common with a lot of my classmates because, you know, there's stuff even at right. 27, 28 I don't do now. You know, you just grow. You just grow. It happens. You're trying time. to, like, party and go to the yeah. bars on Fridays and get right. together. Nah. Yeah. That's not me, bro. I've done, I have done. I did all that. Right. I'm done with that. That part of my life. <laughs> which is cool. Yes. It's cool. And so it's just a little different. I'm actually the class representative of my class. And so, like, mm-hmm. if somebody has an issue or, or wants to request something, they come to me. And like so, like the RD all over again. Yeah, it's like the RD. You know oh, how man, it yeah, never stops. Man. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> it's been pretty chill. Um, you know how class is, man. People talk and all that type of stuff. Yep. So just, you know, from my perspective, I can see the immaturity. I'm like, wow. You know, come mm-hmm. 36, and I'm looking at everybody else in our class is like significantly lump, younger than most or most of the people. And of course, it's mostly right. females. It's just mm-hmm. like, okay, this is what we're doing. All right. So it's it, yeah, it's all right, man. Um, I have like one or two people I'm real cool with. I'm nice to everybody, don't get me wrong. But like I said, we're yeah. just in different places in our lives. And I kind of, you know, I'm all business mode. I want to do what I gotta do so I can start my career. But it's interesting, bro. Like being on the other side, it's just it's just funny, you know, when you grow and you look back and you're like, I used to do stuff like that, and now I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, uh, <laughs> or they may ask you something that's like, ah, no, I'm good. I'm not doing that. I'm not going out on a Friday night. I'm not going uh, out to get drunk or anything. Like, I'm going to go mm-hmm. chill at home and watch Sports Center. That's what I'm going to go do. So, yeah, like I want to finish this grad school. I don't want anything getting in the way. This is what we're doing. This this is what we have to do. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Absolutely. And by the way, if I froze, don't worry. Streamer just keeps recording, so just pretend I didn't freeze because I know you okay. just froze. All right, cool, There's cool. Me. No problem, bro. Am I frozen for you? You are. You are. Okay, yeah, you're frozen for me too. Streamer does that. Uh, I'm not really sure why. It just happens, but it just it still works. Everything's still yeah. recording, so treat it as if it's normal. Okay, you uh, got it. Ooh, I think we're it good. But yeah. So yeah, I definitely understand the uh, the age thing. I was certainly older than most people in my class. I wasn't 36. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm still not 36, but I was definitely older. I was married at the time when I was going through school, and like just totally different. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. life path. Oh yeah. Everybody else was like basically still like an under an undergrad, which I mean that's the age. Everything was appropriate for them. Mm-hmm. They were also a lot smarter than I was, so they could you know go out and do their thing and still be okay. And I, I could right. Still. Uh, so I definitely, definitely understand that. Uh, any like big main advice to one pre PA students, pre PA applicants to specifically anyone looking for either like extra consideration, their low GPA, whatever the case may be, or they're looking for a second chance like you, you know, like what is, cause it seems hopeless, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's like, I'm never going to be able to get my grades up enough. Statistically, I'm not going to get in. Like, right. that's where a lot of people are in that boat. What mm-hmm. do you have to say to those people as someone who came out on top of that? Um, You know, just, for, I think first, just know, you know, it starts with you. Believe in yourself. Know, know what you got to do. Know it's not going to be easy. So be willing to put in the work. But it is possible. I think the first thing is, you know, you know this, Boris. Um, grades are like the number one thing. Like, I had... Endless right. amount of 
uh, extra, you know, PRP, uh, I can't even, healthcare hours, PC hours. PC, sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that, man. Yeah. And so at but, CNA, you know, like close to 8,000 working. Wow. I got volunteer. I did an internship at Wake Forest School of Medicine. And I volunteered at the Muscular Dystrophy Association summer camp. And I did all these type of things and whatnot. But my GPA was still low, and like schools are just are not going to look past that unless you bring something extra to the table. That is just the reality, everyone. And so, like I said, me getting the master's degree, I think first off, you need to retake all classes you got to see in, especially you know like the the undergrad courses, because that's what most PA schools, or if not all of them, weigh or they kind of measure everybody on is is the undergrad level. And so, you know, what I was told is you retaking classes show you're serious about this. You're not just willing to accept what you got and whatnot and hoping that they'll mm-hmm. set, accept you in because that's just wishful thinking. So retaking classes, um, no matter how many they are, you know, if you get a C or below, that's the rule of thumb is you need to retake it. And the other thing is like the master's degree, that's but that's individualized, I'll say. I needed it. I kind of like to describe that as like the Fast and Furious movies. You know, there'll be that scene <laughs> people will be driving or somebody's driving where it's Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, rest in peace, or somebody. and you know, they're racing, they're far behind everybody. The finish line is all the way up front. They think they're gonna lose the race, and then they press that button with the nitro and it just like nice. <laughs> all the, yeah, the gas all the way to the front. That's kind of what the yep. master's degree was for me. <laughs> I didn't want to spend like years and years retaking call uh community college courses, you know, trying to prove mm-hmm. myself. And so that's why I went and took that leap and took got that master's degree to jump start me at the front. Because a lot of people are applying to PA programs with two, some even three degrees. You know, it's getting wow. even more competitive every year. There's a handful of people that have master's degrees coming in in my class, um, a few mm-hmm. with public health and whatnot. So it's getting more competitive. It's becoming more common just because people are looking for something to separate themselves from the pack. And so that's what mm-hmm. I would advise all the pre PAs to something Find something that makes you unique. You unique. If that's GPA, if you have to go get a master's, yes, it's more money, but you have to look at the end goal. And then the other thing is, again, apply strategically. I was actually still told this by a friend of mine. She said, this don't apply to like 44 schools or 100 schools or whatnot. Look at the school, look at it closely um, and see if it fits you. You know, a lot of PA, like the University of Washington Medics out in um, Seattle. The thing about them is, and I was told this, is they hit on a lot of good students because they look past the GPA, you know. Um, they just don't look at the GPA. They look at other things that they bring to the table. And they've even told me, like, I know um, the head of diversity chair out there, Dathion, he's a great guy. He told me this. He said a lot of PA programs every year, they miss out on students that will be outstanding PAs. They may not have, like, the forefront of GPA, but they miss out on them because that's all they look at. You know, there's more to being a PA than grades. Um, way more to it, you know bedside manner, the ability to communicate with people, that's stuff you can't teach, you know. Um, but I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of PA programs are stick, stuck strictly on grades, which is important. I'm not trying to downplay that. But there's also other aspects to the application that make somebody attractive and will make them a great PA going forward. Uh, one of my professors, Dr. R, she straight up told me, she said, well, you know, we don't want students that are 4.0 students because if all you guys were 4.0 students, we wouldn't have a job. You know, we want mm-hmm. students that have to work a little bit harder because, therefore, they need us or whatnot. And that's what we're here for. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, just look at schools that look outside the box is what I'm saying um, in a nutshell. And they're out there. Um, like, the, if you want me to sing those charts, right, the charts I use, bro, or the, the schools that I saw that would look at people, you know, their most recent credit hour, most recent 40 to 60 credit hours, or look mm-hmm. outside the box, I can sing you that. Just let me know. Um, but, yeah, I think that's what I would do. I think the downside to it, I'm single, I don't have any kids. And so the downside is you got to be willing to move everywhere because there's only a limited amount of schools I could apply to, like 12. And so, like, if you're married or have a family, that might be an issue, obviously. Uh, but if you, you know, you don't have anything um, or anybody to discuss, if you're not married or you don't have any kids, that's something you may want to think about. Some people, you know, they're picky. They don't want to move outside this geographic area. And I've seen it on these groups, man. They're like, you know, I want to go to school only in Florida and all this stuff. And then, like, they yeah. don't meet the requirements in Florida. It's like, well, what are you going to do? Like, just keep applying? Right. Like, there's like, yeah, you got to, yeah, you got to, you got to, people, people got to face reality. Like, you're looking at something yeah. that's 
between a two and five percent ambition rate overall. So you're yes. trying to limit yourself even more to like point one now by going by like only a few states. I don't understand like, it. You just you can't. You just I, 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 I do get the motivation. I want to be my mom and dad, blah blah blah. But like, bro, yeah. you know, just yeah, bro. just the numbers don't line up with that. Um, bro. But yeah, definitely. If you do have those charts, we can definitely like make a PDF out of them, or I could just put the info in the video uh, notes. Okay. I'm okay. sure people would love to see that. So 100 okay. percent email me that. All right, my man. Uh, so one thing we kind of started touching on a little bit before that I just wanted to discuss with you. I don't know yeah. if any of y'all have written or have read my book that right in the beginning, it says why this book was written. Essentially, it was to give people a chance that would not usually otherwise have a chance at PA school, low GPA folks. Um, and then I also went a lot into the demographics of PA programs. And this was a few years ago. They are changing, thank goodness. Um, but a lot of the demographics like we mentioned previously was almost everybody like 70 plus percent was basically young um 25 or so or younger uh suburban middle to upper class caucasian female i took it upon myself to want to change that and give other people a chance uh there's like in our national zeitgeist there's a huge conversation about diversity it means so many different things to so many different people in medicine i keep saying over and over again in medicine specifically it's important it's specifically important uh, because not that you have to be the exact same demographics as your patients, but it helps in specific areas, like specifically about language or culture. If you're in a culture, you understand a culture that somebody perhaps is not, you're better able to communicate with patients from that culture who might not have good experiences with medicine, right? So I'm Russian. I speak Russian. Uh, Russians are some of the most annoying people to treat on the face of the earth because they're always looking for a solution that's not there. Uh, and they don't trust you either, even if you're Russian. But if you speak Russian, it helps. And they're like, all right, damn, I'll take the stupid drugs and I'll stop eating my, you know, whatever, my super hot soup. Uh, this is why they all have GERD. But anyway, that's just a very, very specific example. But I just wanted to give you the floor and have you talk about it as well. Yeah, man. Uh, well, thank you for obviously... Uh, creating this platform or being openly willing to talk about that. Um, so I tip my hat to you, Boris, my friend. Um, it always helps to have somebody of the Caucasian descent, I will say, that represents the majority to speak up on that. I think that makes up a lot of difference as well. Um, in terms of, for me, diversity is obviously um, a big a big portion of it. I always say it goes like white females, white males, black females, and then black males are like 2% of all PAs in the country, literally. Honestly, that even seems high to me. Right. That, and it I've might never, be lower. I've never met one. Yeah, exactly. And I've you know what? Right. I've never met one. I didn't meet I've one before one. I got to Rutgers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Literally. All, yeah, literally. Like everybody the that only... wrote my um, letters of recommendation. Yeah. Before I applied, when I got into Memphis and Rutgers, were all white, bro. Mm -hmm. So, you oh, know, yeah. Everyone. that was just the reality. Yeah, that was just the reality. That's literally um, by statistics the reality. Yeah, it's the, it's the reality, and you hit it on the nose. Yeah. Like patients feel more comfortable if they have see somebody that looks like them that they can relate to. At least a it's, little bit, to some degree. Yeah, of course. Last week, it's funny you said that. Last week, I walked in. I was taking care of a patient. It was an annual physical, pretty basic. Mm -hmm. Walked in. Guy looked at me. He said, "You know, who are you?" I said, "You know, my name's James. I'm a PA student. I'm rotating here. I'm helping to take care of you today." And he got excited, man. I. I didn't know what was wrong. He's just like, man, I've been to this office, you know, for X number of years. All I've seen is like white males or white females. He said, you're the first black male PA I've ever seen. I said, well, I'm not, you know, I'm a student. Right. I'm not. He said, doesn't matter. Like, you're going doesn't to be matter. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, right. this is awesome, bro. He said, you're going to help a lot of people. You're basically a unicorn. He said, keep mm -hmm. up the good work because people like me, we need people like you. And that made me feel good, you know, especially after a tough mm -hmm. day. But that's just a microscopic of what a lot of people that look like me or any ethnicities are feeling because it's just tough, man. I look at a lot like on Instagram, I'll look at different pages of different PA programs, you know, friends I made through Instagram and they're graduating class. And I, you know, this is the first time I pick up on how many people look like me. And bro, it's kind of like, like, it's kind of like a gallon of vanilla or a half gallon of vanilla ice cream with a black speck. That's what, that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> just, but only one. 
it's just one, but it's right. That's there's the not even it's not even like a, a whole ice cream cone with like a few yeah. sprinkles. Literally one sprinkle. Literally, it's, one. Like it's that rare. It's that rare, bro. In my class, yeah. we have like four or five females, black females, which we do good. But it's I've like me and my boy John. We're the only mm -hmm. black males. And what's crazy, we started out with four. There was two others. One left after probably like six weeks. I don't oh, know. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know the full details on that. And another guy, he actually had to decelerate to the class below us. So he's not like kicked mm -hmm. out of school or anything. He's just in a different mm -hmm. class now. Um, I think he got caught COVID or something. But it's just mm -hmm. unfortunate. But like it started out, we had four of us. And then after like the first year, we came down to two. And so it's crazy, bro. It's it's really unfortunate. Um, I don't know, like, you know, how we can combat it or whatnot. But it's tough, bro. Um, helping, um, helping people get in, bringing people up, bringing people up, man. That's that's why that's I'm all, open. That's, it. that's why I'm open, man. Like people, I, I'm an open book. You know, I can't tell you the amount of people who have messaged me on Instagram randomly. I, I I don't know who they are. Hey, um, I was recommended to contact you because somebody told me your story. I'm in a similar situation, or I'm a black male, black female looking to get in. Do you have any mm -hmm. advice? And I'm an open book, man, because people helped me. I didn't get here by accident. I mean, yeah, it sounds like a lot really, of people helped. That's yeah, awesome. I mean, a lot of hard work, but a lot of people helped me get here, black and white. And so, like, I also recognize more diversity needs to be attributed to the profession. And so, of course, I'm going to help people to look out, look at that look like me, but really anybody, bro. But, um, you know, the profession, I wish, I don't know if there's like more groups. I know I'm in PAs of color, physician assistants of color, which is like a great group. It's like a group on Facebook. It's like a national group and they do a great job of trying to bring diversity, you know, talking to admissions boards about talking right. to our group and, and, and making us feel comfortable. Cause you know, to be honest with you, bro, that's another thing that I've known to discourage is people to look like me from applying. Like we just can't apply anywhere, you know? Um, oh, what do you mean? So, like, there was a school in Idaho. I can't remember what it was. I know in Montana it was like Rocky Mountain Community College, like a PA school. There was one in Montana, there was one in Idaho. And I was considering applying there because I'm like, you know, I'm willing to go anywhere. And my mom, she had told me at the time, she said, look, I understand this is your dream and stuff, but I don't feel comfortable with you going out that far. I said, why don't you? Yeah, she's like, it's the middle of nowhere. There's not a whole lot of people that look like you. I've heard mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, anti-government, all this type of stuff. Like, I just right. don't want you to, like, wander in the wrong place. You don't have any sure. family out there. Something happens to you, and somebody may not even know or say anything. We wouldn't even know for years. We wouldn't even know. And so, mm -hmm. you know, not even Idaho or Montana, but, like, deep south. I kind of marked all those schools out. I've been considering South Carolina them. and below. Yeah, man, South Carolina and below. Um, I was considering Mississippi College at one time. That marked out really quick. You know, you, mm -hmm. um, I think Harding University was like my last school of choice when I applied before I got into Rutgers. That's located in Arkansas. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that was like the last of the last. And because, you know, you want to be comfortable, man. I mean, that's just a reality of being a minority. It's not just going to PA school. It's making sure that, you know, you have the support and you feel safe. You know, you don't have to mm -hmm. worry about um, any trouble or anything that abrupt happening to you. One of my classmates is funny. She says she knows a girl. She was Asian of the Asian descent, and she was out in some school, I think in Montana or Idaho, out west, mm -hmm. and said there was no support. Um, the faculty kind of gave her the cold shoulder. They didn't support her. Like she told me this out oh, her wow. and said yeah. the girl was thinking about just like leaving school and starting all over, you know, just mm -hmm. to get out of that environment. And that's you know, that's a reality of applying to PA school too. A lot of people think it's just right. crazy stuff, man. But mm -hmm. you know, especially when you're a minority, you have to think about that type of stuff. You know, we have to think mm -hmm. about that type of stuff, you know. Not everybody does, and I understand that, but I know that we do. And that's just, um, you know, it's, it's just a growing concern, brother. Man, it's hard enough without making things that are more difficult on top of that, and that's, yeah. you know, some people have to think about more than others. Absolutely. Um, related, but somewhat, I guess, unrelated, I'm actually moving to North Carolina, to Raleigh area, in a couple are of months. Are you really? Yeah. I, uh, and so I've been living in upstate New York the last five years. And okay. And I just recently moved to Ohio for a little bit. I'm actually in my house in New York right now. Uh -huh. um, and so, like, I was always dreaming about Raleigh because, one, I'm just tired of New York BS. Laws, yeah. behavior, just all of it. Weather, yeah. you know. 
And so I was always thinking like, oh yeah, down south, I want to go where it's warm. I want to go where it's a little more traditional. I want to start a family, uh -huh. X, Y, and Z. And then I forgot about something until my Jewish friend told me, because I'm Jewish. Okay. Um, until my Jewish friend told me, she's like, yeah, I lived in North Carolina. There's a lot of like anti-Semitism down here. And I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't even think about that yeah. for two seconds. Yeah. Because I could just see myself like getting there, buying a house. Mm -hmm. And then they'd be like, hey, you heard he's a Jew? And then like, boom, the whole neighborhood hates me. And it's like, probably not going to happen. But at the same time, it's something you don't think about until you got to think about it. Right. Absolutely. So my oh. plan was to buy the biggest American flag and the second biggest U.S. Navy flag and just put them out front of the house. Yeah. And hopefully it like counterbalances or something. I like it. I like, like it. Yeah, all right. Maybe he's Jewish, but he, he was in the Navy and he, he likes America. So, all right. He, he's fine. He's fine. Yeah. All right. Like, right. Right, it right, sounds right. like a joke, but like there's people in this country that think that way. There's a lot Ooh. of people in this country oh, that think oh, that way. Oh, you know, you know, moving to Jersey was like a culture shock, right, for me because I'm from North Carolina, yeah. and so it was uh -huh. kind of worse. My dad's from Hackensack, North Jersey, and so he kept okay. telling me like, "Look, it's going to be different when you go up north. Like the north is not yeah, like He kept reiterating right. that, but it took me moving up here and being out here on my own mm -hmm. to really see what he was saying. But the one thing I can appreciate is the diversity, brother. Like, there's so many ethnicities and stuff, you know, around here. You know, I feel it's like different. everybody has to get along because there's so many ethnicities. There's no way you could have, like, a race war or something like that. There's, like, everybody just got to get along. You know, everybody's that up here. be a little more fair. Right, be a little more fair. Like, <laughs> that was different than coming down south, bro. Like, Raleigh was fine. You know, I lived in Raleigh for a little bit, obviously, with my master's. But you notice the difference. It was – there's not so much diversity – and like social awareness and stuff. It's just different, you know. We have these things. I don't know if you heard the term sundown. There's like sundown towns, especially when you go like east. It's like country areas, which is like mostly ca Caucasian people. Oh, <laughs> where you yeah. don't go out after the sun goes down. <laughs> right, right, right. I always heard about it like where you hear banjos, you stop and turn around. Right, right, right. You know, There's you a get way of, out on the sticks. Oh, yeah. Like in like go east of Raleigh. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, you start going to Clayton, and Smithfield and Anger and like even like in the Charlotte area, like Monroe. And like I'll just say this, like there's like hardly no black people in western North Carolina. Once you start going to Asheville and hit the mountains, like you can. No. Yeah. You no, know. Not. And so. Um, At least yeah, when well, I was down there, I noticed that not much. Right, right, right. It's it's just way different, brother. And so that's one thing I will say I can appreciate about the North. But that's stuff, you know, stuff like you just said about moving around. That's stuff we have to think about, man. Not everybody does. It's stuff you got to think about. There's stuff you really you know? got to consider. It's you really got to consider it. Well, yeah, because, like, I mean, choosing a PA school or choosing where to live or whatever, there's definitely a lot to consider um, as a minority in any way, shape, or form or – as a, like a religious group or whatever, like there's always considerations that probably at the end of the day, probably not going to be a big deal, probably not going to be an issue, but it's that like 1% of times where it's like, okay, it might or right. it may or may not sway you in any direction, but it, it's probably not going to be an issue. Right. Um, right. Right. At least right. you hope, but, Absolutely. but yeah, it's, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, yes, I did want to touch on the whole, like, I wouldn't even say necessarily people who like look like me or look like you going into medicine. Um, I would actually kind of be curious from your side. So you've already been on rotation, right? And you've seen plenty of patients. Yes. Good amount. Right. Have you felt any bias, any like what, like negativity or whatever, when like you come in as the provider, even a student provider? Not negativity, surprisingly. There was one guy. I don't think he was. I think he was just, that's just his personality. That's why I was told. Some people are just dicks. Yeah, yeah. He, and he wasn't, a, he wasn't a dick, but you could just tell he was a little full of himself. You know, he worked, he lived in a nice area in Jersey. He lived like in Livingston. I don't know if you know. Right. Uh, Scotch Plains, Berkeley Heights area. Very successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all this type of stuff. And so you just got the feeling, but it was fine. That wasn't a big deal. I would say more surprised than anything, just because, like I said, I'm a unicorn. Not really, like, turned off. And not to say mm. I won't experience that, okay. but more surprised. Like, I walked in. So at my rotation of family med, you know, there's residents that work there as well. And all of them, they're really great. And I'm there for eight weeks. And every two weeks, their new residents rotate out. And so I, mm. essentially I'm going to see four sets of residents. This, I'm on my third set right now. But yeah. earlier this week, Monday, um, we had our I had my third new set of residents, and like this girl looked at me because I was like, you know, I greet everybody, you know, I've never met, I'm just saying hi. And she looked mm -hmm. at me like, 
I was like, hi, I'm James on the PA student here, rotate here. And she was just like, oh my God. And I was just like, is there something wrong? She was just like, no, like. I was just surprised. Yeah, just surprised. So I like, no, just welcome. And I I went to hang up my hoodie and stuff. And I just, I remember hearing her saying, she was like, um, I was expecting like a little white girl. Like, <laughs> I was surprised. Because of your name, James? Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting a little white girl like to come in, like when they said the PA is rotating, rotating here. I guess they didn't tell him I'll tell her I was black. She was just like, "Oh my god!" Like, right. like I well, never seen a black expected PA. Expected that because most PA students are, you know, like right seventy so, percent, like you said. And so, right. yeah, man, more surprised than anything. Um, I noticed with the black patients, there's a sense of pride. I have noticed that. You know, I walk in, mm-hmm. and they're, they're always encouraging me. And it's like, man, it's really good to have one of us in here, like. Do they ever I, tell you things that they like never told anyone else? Um, I wouldn't say that, but I, I feel like they're well, more comfortable, like the language, you know, they're not yeah. just professional or whatnot. It's like, you know, sure. uh whatnot. They're just down to earth, you know. It's kind of like we're talking on the mm-hmm. street or like we're at a, a barbecue or whatnot, or a cookout, sure. you know. But they never go like, look, I never told a doctor this for like 10 years, but now like I'll tell you. That hasn't happened. Not yet. Not saying it will. Not saying it will. It will. Um, I did have a patient. Yeah, I had a patient yesterday. Um, he was coming in for an STD panel and stuff, and sure. he did tell me. I was like, "Okay, man, like you know, you get screened off." And he was like, "Yeah, you know, I told the doctor that he usually comes in here. You know that you know it's just moderate screen. But I'm just tell you, I was out in London and Amsterdam. I had me some fun, so you know I'm just here. I didn't <laughs> hear that. I was like, "Hey, man, like this is no judgment, though. It's me, it's me and you, or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So it's cool." And I was like, "You didn't tell, you know." My perceptor at the time said, so "You didn't tell." He said, like, "No, I didn't tell her because you know, uh, I didn't know what uh, she was thinking or what now." He said, "But you right. know, I, feel like I can be open to you." I was like, "Okay." I was like, right. "You know, how was London?" So I just tried to have a conversation mm-hmm. and stuff, and so we talked and whatnot. So yeah, um, yeah. they just feel more. You can tell the comfortability changes. They're not mm-hmm. on like pins and needles or or walking right. in shells. You can just feel it. Mm-hmm. So that's a male thing too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Especially with something like that. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I mean, sometimes like as a solo provider, you're like you happen to be the only one there, yeah. and like someone wants a female provider, like sorry, I'm, I'm it. But yeah. like if somebody's coming in for a male thing, you know, yeah. they just you know that's their lucky day. Like there's not a lot of male PAs, and right, they just, you know right. they happen to be here, right and here. So it's like yeah. nobody thinks of male like men as a minority because we're not almost anywhere. But in medicine, yeah, and especially as a PA, right, like, we we are we are yeah. a tiny minority, like twenty yeah. percent lo- or less. Yeah, you know what I mean. Preach. So yes, that's sir. another thing. Yes, sir. I didn't even think about that. You're absolutely right. Yeah, there, there's not a lot. No, you know, no, so no. it's that part's definitely interesting. Even so yeah, my, I mean, that, that part's, huh? No, go ahead. I was just saying, even in my class, there's like 12 guys out of like out 40, of how many people? Like 44. We started out with 50. So like 25 ish percent. Would, yeah, that's actually high. That's and high. I don't know how many we had. We had 75 people total. I didn't count, but it was a huge program. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't count, but I want to say we might have had like 10 guys, if yeah. not less. Yeah. yeah. In that program. We're rare. We're rare. It's, yeah. I mean, it's like you can't be the perfect provider for every single patient. That's literally impossible. But there are advantages to being a little bit older. For dang sure, um, you know, being a male in a definitely female dominated profession, it's it comes with challenges and it comes with advantages. Like your male patients will appreciate it if they're coming in for a male thing. Right, um, that's definitely true. Mm. And also, like I want to touch on the being older thing. So, okay, so I don't know if you saw my interview with this girl Grace. No, I did. I wasn't. No, not yet. No, it was a little while ago. It, it was twenty two year old. Okay. Blonde, you know, dad's a doctor. Oh, wow. Um, you know, okay. very, yeah. very, very smart, very yeah. sweet, like basically wow. been ready to practice medicine her whole life. Wow. She should be doing it. like yeah. if anyone should be doing this, it's her, it's in her freaking blood. Like she's been looking at EKG since she was four. Oh, you know what wow. I mean? Like, okay, her dad's a doctor, All right? Okay. So she's she definitely belongs in medicine 100%. Right. One thing that I, I wish I would have talked to her about that I didn't in our interview is uh, she's gonna find it challenging to relate to a majority of her patients. Right. You know, because she's so young. 
She's so young, right? It's not hard because she's here. not yeah. because she's a girl, not because right. she like you know grew up with some money, not because X, Y, and Z, but because she's so young, right? Uh, perfect example. I had this one patient. I can't remember what she was even there for, like everything, but she was a care patient, um, and she was in her sixties, and she had like a little bandana type thing because she was you know losing her hair because of chemo, and mm-hmm. she was so embarrassed about it. But literally, what she came to see me about was like a bump on her head, and I was like, well, I got to be able to see it, you know. And she's like, yeah, but I'm bald. And I was like, yeah, so am I. And like, I just totally glossed past it. And then she like laughed and she like just whipped it off. And she's like, all right, whatever here. And like someone who's younger would have probably been really uncomfortable and been like, well, ma'am, you know, I really need to see it. I was like, yeah, I'm bald. What of it? it? You know, cause like I'm older and like, I've been through some stuff and I lost my hair and like, I've had health issues. And like, it's just even being in your thirties is such a monumental difference from being in your twenties. It is a huge advantage because you are, uh, you can relate to most of your patients at least a little bit more. You're not right. 60, but but you can. Right, right, right. You know, and th- I remember there was one uh, one of my favorite doctors ever that I uh, scribed for in the ER. Like, he, there was some really bad news that had to be delivered. And the guy who was taking care of the person with the bad news was this, like, really handsome, young, like, 30-plus, 30 30-ish-year-old 30 doctor. And Dr. S was like, you know what? Maybe someone with gray hair should deliver this news. And I totally got it. Mm-hmm. You know, oh yeah, fantastic, yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Um, like circling I said, all the way back around to like just relating to your patients. Oh, for sure, for sure. Like I said, even in my class, you can tell the age difference. And people that are young, they just don't. You haven't lived. You're like 21, 22, still staying right. at home with mom and dad. You just fresh out of undergrad. <laughs> you know, right. it's just like you know, being older, like life experience. We've been through things. You've seen things. Like mm-hmm. there's different mechanism. My advisor used to tell me all the time, she said, I think you're really going to like flourish in rotations because you've had life experience. Like, yes, you know, you know, you've had a lot. We have students here. They literally came out of undergrad, literally. Mm-hmm. They may have had enough PC hours just to get in, patient care hours just to get accepted. She said that they had, got over the summer. Right. That they got over the yeah. summer. Like you you have life. Is, you're able to relate. You've worked before. Right. Like, you know what it takes. Mm-hmm. You know how to show up to a job on time. You know how to be professional. You know how to Correct. communicate with patients and like mm-hmm. adversity, where it be a good situation or bad situation. Like you know all these things. That's mm-hmm. something they don't have, and there's no right. substitution for it. There's just no substitution for it. And just one thing I wanted to touch on, like because it sounds like we're kind of beating up on these younger kids, and we're not. No, no we're one not. Person, of course not. Of you guys, I am so jealous of them. Like it's not oh, even funny yeah. because oh, I'm thirty-four. Yeah. On yeah. my third year of practice, if I was 24 in my third year of practice, I like the world would have just been so different, oh, yeah. like in a good way, you know. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, like, so one, if you're younger and watching this, we're not beating up on you. We're, we're jealous. Yeah. We're so jealous of where you are. It's not even fair. Yeah. Not even funny. Oh, like we, we wish we started this as early as you. That's one. Yeah. Two, can you imagine where they're going to be where when they're our age mm-hmm. after That's 12 more years of practice? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, man, you took the They're work. They're going to be so far ahead of where we are. So far ahead. Right. And just financially and, yes. and all the, like, life experiences from practicing medicine. So, like, yes. they're, like, yeah, okay, they're young kids now with whatever, but they're going to be medical providers. They're going to yeah. learn, and they're going to learn fast. Yeah. So, like, guys, we're not beating up on you. Like, we're jealous, yeah. and you guys are going to be so much better than us, you know, as providers and as humans by the time you get to our age just because of the time. Right. You know, 12 exactly. extra years of practice. So, Promise, we're not beating up on you. We're, we're just jealous. Absolutely, I co-sign yeah. everything you said, bro. Um, to everybody, all the younger applicants out there, like we are not beating up. Yeah. I am so jealous of all of you guys. Literally, there's a girl in my class. She's like 24, bro. She has mm-hmm. the maturation of a 34 year old. Like I can talk mm-hmm. to somebody. You know, you can tell somebody they're like a little younger. You can just tell. Mm-hmm. But talking to her, like she's just so down to earth and chill. And I tell her all the time, I have such admiration for you, like a thousand percent. And she was like, oh, mm-hmm. Jane. I said, no, I'm serious. Like, I wish I was you. I said, but there was no way I could have been you. Because when I was your age, I just cared about partying, frat house, Literally. going downtown, all that stuff. I said, right. I would have held out of PA school in one week if I was sorry. If I would have started when I was 20. Yeah. Seriously. Well, I, I, didn't, I just didn't have the discipline or whatnot. I said, mm-hmm. I admire you. I said, girl, you're going to be 25 with a job making bank and then mm-hmm. starting your career. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, and then like you said, you look at 10 years from now, they're only 35. They'll be my age with 10 years experience. So oh, yeah. she'll I, have like four houses. Yeah. And Tip my house. Be off to the young applicants for sure. 
for sure. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know we kind of took a, a lot of loopy side yeah, good. agents and whatnot, but I think good. we covered the diversity thing pretty good. We definitely covered advice to students pretty good. Um, yeah, what, what else do you want to say into the world? Because I mean, anything else you really want to feel like you want to put out there that you haven't? Um, I think that's it, bro. Just telling everybody, like, if you really want it, you can make it happen. Like, you know, that's the bottom line. I know that's easier said than done. Believe me, nobody more than me knows it's easier said than done. Um, but if you really want something, don't give up. Um, just keep grinding at it. Keep grinding. Um, it, like I said, it's not easy. And like I said, I always think about what I what if I would have given up. Like, where would I be if I would have given up? Where would I be now? The first know. time. Right. The first time. Yeah. If I just would have said, well, let me just try nursing. Yeah, I probably could have got through. But would I be really happy? Would I be really happy? You wouldn't still, be as proud of yourself. Right. I wouldn't be proud of myself. I, I didn't want to look. And that was my biggest regret. I didn't want to look back and say, what if I just would have just gave it one more shot? Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, especially like, you know, I talk, I'll tell people this, you know, my pen and ceremony it was like it was amazing. Like I'm looking around. And this auditorium or the, the um the area and my white coat my parents are there my mom and dad they're so proud and i had to give a speech as class representative the president and the class mm -hmm. representative had to give a speech and so it was i was just enamored bro like seeing my name up on the projector and everybody yep. could see me and it kind of made all those long nights of staying up till three four five in the morning studying worth it you know mm -hmm. i was like the journey's not over you know there's still work to be done but i said i I'm so glad I didn't give up. I said, this is this is what it was for. You know, to the people that counted me out, that said I was washed up. It's just like, now it, all I hear is congratulations and I'm so proud of you. That's the funny thing. That is one thing I want to tell you. I don't hear, man, maybe you should try something else or it wasn't meant for you. I don't hear that at all. All mm -hmm. I hear is, man, you did it. I'm so proud of you. Um, you're a true inspiration. And it's all because I didn't give up. Um, it's all because I didn't give up. So I, I tell my all the pre -PAs, um, you know, if you want it, go after it. Um, you know, no matter how many times it takes to apply, always try to strengthen and improve your application. You know, I applied twice. I can say that every school I interviewed with, um, I was accepted to, and I was three schools. Um, mm -hmm. but if you if you want it, go after it. You know, don't let anybody deter you or whatnot. And age doesn't matter. I mean, look at me. Um, I'm not even the oldest in my class. We have a girl. She's 44 years old, three kids, and married. If you mm -hmm. want it, go after it. Yeah, don't let anything hold you back. Yes, sir. Um, I had one guy, Army guy, actually getting out of the Army. He's trying to decide, should I go to business school or should I go to PA school? And I was like, bro, if you're even like remotely considering anything besides medicine, don't do medicine. Like, th There's easier ways to make money. But if yeah. you happen to be one of those people where you're like, there's nothing else I could do, listen to that because there's nothing else you can do. It's going to come back around in 10 more years and you're going to be like, all right, now I'm ready. Like just do right. it now. If you know now, just just go. Yeah. Do what right, you gotta right. do. Get a master's, do what you gotta do. Don't sleep, yeah. work your butt off. Yep. You got yep. it. You can yep. do it. Yep. You yes, can sir. Do it. yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. We're gonna end this recording now. Um, man, James, thank you for like sharing your whole story. Thank you for just like this incredible story of yours. It's so motivational. Cause I mean, I thought I went through some stuff to get in. You literally got into a program, had to start all over again and then some and here you are you know getting pretty dang close to graduating so i mean like hats off to you so so motivational appreciate it, my bro appreciate you having me on man and allow me to share my story and, and wisdom wisdom and experience with others so i appreciate you brother no literally this is going to help so many people and i'm going to put your email in the in the video notes if anyone wants to email james uh if he gets inundated i'll take it out uh so his yeah. email in the in the notes might be a perennial thing. It might come and go as, as he has no time. Worries. And uh, I'll say um, I'll text you my I'll text you my Instagram my uh, screen name. So if they want to find me on there, or whatnot, that's fine too. I'm an open book, bro. Yeah, we'll do both. I might even paste it like below your name, just so people okay. if they're like, oh, he said this, and now I want to shoot him a message. Like I already yeah. see it on the screen. I'll just do okay. that. Let's do um, it. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you very much for helping all the the future PAs out there. I'm going to end the recording right here, and actually hang out after I click end because I want to talk to you about North Carolina. Okay. <laughs> uh, but ending recording now. See y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Comment below, please like, share, and subscribe. Buy the book. The end. Bye.